You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. This episode is brought to you by MissArtastic.com. If you're a teacher or art educator, you can find ideas, tips, advice, and art resources for art education at MissArtastic.com. Find the link in the description or go to MissArtastic.com now. Color has the power to evoke emotion, set the mood, and convey meaning. In this episode, we're going to be exploring the element of color, art color in depth, examining the science behind color perception, the psychology of color, and the ways in which color is used in different industries from fashion to marketing. By the understanding the role of color in art and design, we can develop a greater appreciation for its power and its potential. And use it more effectively to communicate our ideas and connect with our audiences. So make sure you flip your phone down. I still want to stand. <laughs> Put down your phone, whatever distractions are going on. Just really make sure that you give yourself this time to grow and develop with me. So give yourself the time to just appreciate this, to get some inspiration, and that way, whatever TV or other things are going on, you gotta, you know, get the kids busy if you have them going on, or fur babies, in my case, fur babies. Get everybody busy and settled so that way you can spend time on you. So here we go. Um, introduction to elements of color. So we're just gonna refresh a little bit here, but color is one of the most Fascinating and essential elements of art used by artists to create mood, convey meaning, and evoke emotions. From the vivid hues of a sunset to the muted tones of a winter landscape, color again plays a crucial role in the way we experience and perceive art. Understanding the properties and effects of color can help us analyze and appreciate artworks as well as use color effectively in our own creative endeavors. In this episode, again, we're going to be diving in and delving into the world of color in art by exploring its history, principles, and techniques. Whether you are an artist yourself, an art teacher, an art th- enthusiast, or you're simply curious about the magic of color, then this episode will provide you with a comprehensive guide to this essential element of art. So what is the element of art color? Well, color is the element of art that refers to the visible spectrum of light that the human <laughs> that humans can see. This is what happens when I talk to myself, guys. It just starts. If you're watching me on the video version, right, because I'm doing this video and audio and all of the above since, you know, that's how life is. It's all now. Before I was just doing audio and now I'm like having to film myself because now everything wants video. So here I am. <laughs> like it or hate it. <laughs> but anyways, I'm just trying to make sure I can reach you and provide you with what you need to grow and also get through your year, however that is. But anyways, Again, distracted, it happens. Oh yeah, the visible spectrum of light that humans can see. Doesn't it make you curious about what other species can see? Like seriously, I just like, you know what I mean? Like remember animorphs when they like, turned into like different animals? You're dating myself. Okay, so. <laughs> remember this? Oh, it's so dirty. Um, yeah, but in animorphs, like remember they could change into animals? And um, cause they found that alien object thingy. Anyways, like, how cool was that? They could, like, see, like, were they able to see, I can't remember any more of the details of the books, it's been 
like 20 years, but I feel like they can like see, like, they became the animal, right? So like, could they see the way the animals were seeing? I don't know. I think so. I think there was one book I read where the guy like turned, or no, wasn't there a guy who got stuck as a hawk or something, a falcon? Isn't there one person who didn't turn back right away? I feel like that happened. If you read Animorphs and you know exactly what I'm talking about, stick this answer in the comment section. Cause I'm gonna forget about this and I won't Google it. I could just ask Google, but I don't feel like it. Anyways, um, yeah. So it's one of the most powerful expressive elements. I think I just spent 13 minutes talking about randomness. Um, and it can evoke emotions, set a mood, uh, create a sense of depth and a space in a work of art. Color can be divided into three basic categories, hue, value, and saturation. Um, and there's also tone and then tone shade. Hue, but that's different. We're separating into different basic categories. Hue, value, and saturation. Hue refers to the actual color itself, such as red, blue, or yellow. Of course, those are your primaries. Value refers to the lightness or darkness of a color and can range from white to black. And saturation, also known as intensity or chroma, refers to the purity of the color or how bright or dull it appears. In addition, colors can be classified into warm or cool tones, complementary, anagolous, um, and primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. Woo! But there's also neutral and, you know, everything else in between. And also, if you got distracted, as I got distracted, make sure you come back to me because we're here to continue on this adventure. And next, we're going to be talking about why artists learn about and use color. So artists, such as myself, use color in many different ways, including to create contrast and harmony, to establish a focal point or to represent mood or emotion, um, of course, to communicate ideas or narratives. Color is an essential tool for artists across all mediums, including painting, drawing, sculpture, photography, digital art, and so much more. Uh, artists use color in a variety of ways to create visual interest, communicate emotion, and express ideas in their art. And some common ways artists use to artists use color in their art include uh, first creating mood and emotion. So artists can use color to create specific mood or emotional responses in the viewer. So much of that, guys. Um, so much feels for that. For example, warm colors like red and orange and yellow uh, can create a sense of, of course, warmth and energy, while cool colors like blue, green, and purple can create a sense of calmness or sadness. Next, number two is establishing contrast. Yeah, contrast with color and harmony. Artists can use complementary colors, colors opposite each other on the color wheel, such as red and green, or anagos colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel, like blue and green. Where's my color wheel? Ugh. I got one. Oh my geez. Oh my god. This is my. I'm. I'm good. I got it. Ugh. There we go. Okay, color wheel. So back to that. We have this is from the '90s color wheel. Okay, so uh, complementary colors are opposite. You see red and green opposite of each other on the color wheel. Um, but also you have anagolous colors, which are beside each other, right? So we have beside each other adjacent colors. Um, but also if you look at the color wheel, um, this one's a spinny one. This is my mom's back when she was painting. No, look at this, it's from 1997. <laughs> A lot of good things happened in 1997. Um, also, it's split up into your color schemes, right? We have, oh, it even says on here, yeah. Uh, warm colors, cool colors, right? They make warm, cool colors. Where's it split, right here? Yeah. Warm colors, this is red violet to the reds, and this is blue violet, right? Yeah, blue violet to the blues, and the greens, and we transition down at the bottom. You can see it a little bit more on the back, probably. I don't use this thing because I hope I know. <laughs> but anyways, it's really cool, right? Adding 
red makes brown. Hmm. Right? Anyway. So distracted. Oh, yeah. Um, and basically, it makes contrast in your art. Like, if you look at red and green together, um, yeah, they're the complementary colors. They make high contrast if you make them in one artwork and use it together. You can create contrast. Instead of just using black and white or, like, bright and dull or, like, all that kind of stuff to create contrast, you can create contrast with complementary colors. And I think that's something to really talk a bit more about of that. And also harmony, right? Uh, representing light and shadow, so artists can use uh, value the lightness or darkness of a color to represent light and shadow in their art, uh, creating the illusion of three-dimensional space on a flat surface. Love it. That's the, uh, my favorite way of creating form outside of clay. <laughs> what are, yeah, some I have sculpt. I have a sculpt. I made this. I need some sculptures and look at me. I have all the, sh the whole rest of the studio that you can't see, <laughs> but you can watch my studio on the other half on the Kathleen McGivern Ceramics YouTube channel. Yeah, I just started that. Very small amount of viewers. <laughs> I have so much video editing with it, Miserastic. It's really hard to add more onto my play, honestly. I don't even know. Lack of life, guys. Okay, creating, um, communicating ideas and narratives. So color can also be used to communicate specific ideas or narratives in art. For example, an artist might use red to represent danger or passion. Or use blue to represent calmness or tranquility. Uh, also, you could do create, create focal points. So artists can use color to create a focal point specific in their artwork and like draw the viewer's eye to a very specific area or object. Especially if the rest of the, for example, painting is very muted. But then you, ha especially if you look in the old masters still life, so they have the rest of the thing, you know, muted. Then it's illuminated, so we got contrast and color, and then um, in dark in terms of dark and light, you get that soft illumination around the still life, and that's where most of the only color is, right? So your draw, your eye is going there first, and then you move around the painting, um, and that thing is a really powerful tool uh, that artists can use to create a wide range of effects and meanings in their artwork. Okay, let's talk about some primary colors. Um, so artists can use primary colors, which again are red, blue, yellow, in various ways to create a wide range of colors in their artworks. Um, super big tip is to limit palettes of kids and one's self to red, yellow, blue, white, and black. That's all you need. You do not need to go buy a cart full of fancy paints and like load up on all the colors. Not necessary. Like it's much more beneficial to learn this and get it and understand this. This is essential. This is actually a really good color wheel. It really is. Anyways, um, yeah, I think it's really important. Um, to just limit that self because the primary colors are the building blocks of color theory. Um, and it's essential for creating other colors. You can make all colors, all the things you need, but if you really understand how to understand color theory and you, how to use the primary colors, white and black, you can, you can do anything for the most part. So here are some ways artists use the primary colors. One, for mixing, so artists can mix primary colors to create your secondary colors, such as green, blue, not green, purple, and orange, but also can mix secondary colors with primary colors to make tertiary colors, like blue, violet, for example, or yellow, green. Always place that primary color in front of the secondary color and combine them. That's how you make a tertiary. Um, complementing, so Complementary colors are colors that are opposite to each other on the color wheel. I already went over that. Um, artists can use complementary colors again to create contrast in their work. Dominating, number three, dominating. Artists can use one or more primary colors as the dominant color in their artwork to create a particular mood or effect. Next is contrast. I know I'm getting I'm getting your attention because I know you're getting distracted. <laughs> I got you. So I'm yelling at you, my teacher voice. Okay, that's not my teacher voice. My right now, I'm talking in my teacher voice because my camera is quite far away, and I'm in a really small but like vertical space because this is like attached. You know. Anyways, my what I'm trying to get at is that I'm on a ground level, but the rest of my house actually starts somewhere up here. So I have really weird ceilings. 
It's a garage edition. <laughs> Distracted. Anyways, so I'm using my teacher voice right now. I get really tired by the end of these episodes. <laughs> it's a lot of talking all at once. But Dominique, artists can use one or more primary color as the dominant color in their artwork to create a particular mood or effect. Forest contrast, primary colors can be used to create contrast in an artwork. For example, a red object against a blue, ob blue one or blue background, red object against a blue background can really create some striking contrast. And I think that's nice, nice effects to play with, right? Especially if you're printmaking, that might be something to play with when you're doing printmaking. Um, yeah, then you're targeting two things. That's like that's how you get lots of content smushed into one lesson, right? You're doing color theory, but also printmaking. Smush it together. If you want to add more layers on there, add a theme or explore the elements of art in other ways. Anyway, monochromatic artists can use a single primary color to create a monochromatic artwork varying the value and intensity of the color to create interest. Love it. All right, complementary colors in art. So complementary colors are colors that are, again, opposite each other on the color wheel, such as red and green, blue and orange, yellow and purple. And artists use complementary colors in a variety of ways to create contrast interest and harmony in their artworks and some common techniques include number one contrast so using complementary colors next to each other creates strong vivid contrast and makes each color really appear more brighter and vivid and saturated and this technique is often used to create a focal point in a painting or drawing number two is gradients so when blended together, complementary colors can create smooth gradients and transitions between colors. For example, the example blending blue and orange can create a range of earthy browns. Uh, if you, I believe blue, adding blue to orange. There's an example, adding blue to orange. As you can see it's kind of like an earthier brown. Um, for example, uh, harmonizing using a small amount of complementary color in a painting can create harmony and balance. For example, adding a touch of purple to a yellow painting can create can really help unify the the color scheme. Vibrancy number four is using complementary colors in a high contrast, vibrant way can create a sense of energy and excitement. This technique is often used in pop art and other bold styles. Five, woo! I know, I'm waking you up again. <laughs> mood! Using complementary colors in can really create a specific mood or painting or feeling and a feeling in a painting or a composition. For example, red and green can create a festive Christmasy mood, while blue and orange can create a sense of tranquility or peace. Neutral colors in art. So neutral colors such as black and white, gray and brown are versatile and essential tools in an artist's palette. Artists use neutral colors in a variety of ways to create different effects in their artworks. Some techniques include contrast, Neutral colors can be used to create contrast in a painting or drawing. A black object against a white background can create a striking contrast, while a light gray object can create a, I'm sorry, a light gray can, uh, against a dark gray background can create more of a subtle contrast. So there's not that much difference between the two. Number two is value. So neutral colors can be used to create a range of values in painting or drawing. Um, by mixing black or white with other colors, artists can create a range of shades and tints. Number three, grounding. Yeah. Neutral colors can be used to ground a painting or drawing and provide a sense of stability. Uh, for example, white or light gray backgrounds can create a sense of openness and spaciousness, while a dark brown or black background can create a sense of depth and solid solidity. Texture. Neutral colors can be used to create texture in a painting or drawing. 
by layering different shades of browns and grays and whites, artists can create a variety of textures such as fur or rock or tree bark. Five is harmony. Usual colors can be used to create a sense of harmony and balance in a painting or drawing. For example, a painting that uses a range of neutral colors such as beige, gray, and brown can create a cohesive and soothing effect. Overall, neutral colors are a valuable tool for artists to use in creating, in creating a wide range of effects and emotions in their artworks. In conclusion, the element of art is an essential aspect of the visual expression and communication in our world, from the bright and bold to soft and subtle. Color has the power to inspire and convey emotions in a way that words sometimes cannot, or even imagery, uh, in case of abstract art. Yeah. <laughs> so whether you're an artist or a designer or simply an admirer of art um, or, an, or an art educator or just a teacher wanting to learn a little bit more about it, uh, understanding the properties and effects of color can deepen your appreciation and enhance your creativity. By using color intentionally and skillfully, we can create works of art that are not only visually stunning, but also meaningful and impactful. So let's embrace the beauty and power of color and continue to explore its endless possibilities in the world of art. I'm Miserantastic and that is this episode and I will see you in the next.